Okay, in this video we're going to talk about evaluating a limit with factoring, um, but I also use synthetic division because that's a very useful tool when you're doing these kinds of problems. Um, so let's take a look at something I think is really important to know going into these problems, and that is this. If you have a polynomial f of x, um, and you know that f of a is equal to zero, then by default you know that x minus a is a factor of f of x. That's really important and you use it a lot when you're doing these problems, at least I do. Um, so let me kind of demonstrate what that means. So say we have this limit that we want to evaluate. So the limit as x approaches three of five x squared minus eight x minus 21 all over six x squared minus 17 x minus three. Okay, so you can um, substitute three in, you could take my word for it. Uh, you get zero over zero if you try to evaluate this directly. Um, and what's useful here is that since the numerator and denominator are polynomials, I know that x minus 3 must be a factor of both the numerator and the denominator. So I'm going to use that to try to factor here. So I get um, the limit as x approaches 3. So now what I want to do is I ideally want to factor, but both of these are kind of annoying to factor. And I already know that x minus 3 is a factor of both of them. So I'm going to start in the numerator. I know there's an x minus 3. And then look at what you're factoring. So you're factoring 5x squared minus ax minus 21. And we know that uh, we're starting with a factor of x minus 3. So to get that 5x squared, I must have another um, binomial that starts with 5x. So 5x here. And then I know that I need to end up with negative 21 when I multiply negative 3 times something. So the thing I must multiply by is positive 7. So there's also a plus 7 here. And you can expand that to see that it actually works. And then this is all over. I know that x minus 3 is going to be a factor of the denominator. So I start with my x minus 3, and I go through the same process. So to get 6x squared, um, there must be a 6x. And then to get negative 3, there must be a plus 1. So I have this. And then I can algebraically cancel those. And you can see the 0 over 0 is just disappearing at that point. So I end up with the limit as x approaches 3 of 5x plus 7 over 6x plus 1. And now if I direct substitute, I end up with uh, 22 over 19, which is good. So I use the fact that um, knowing that f of a equals 0, in this case, uh, plugging in 3 gave me 0 in both cases. Um, so x minus a, or in this case, x minus 3, had to be a factor. Um, and I do that a lot. So it's also important to realize that uh, sometimes factoring is hard, and we can often use synthetic division to help us factor. So uh, let's do the, I'm gonna do the numerator, for example. So I know that substituting three in gives me zero, which means that x minus three is a factor. So for synthetic division, I'm gonna set it up like this. I put the three up here. Now I need the coefficients of, uh, 5x squared minus 8x minus 21. So that's 5, a negative 8, a negative 21. I put my line, and then synthetic division, so I drop down the 5. I multiply 3 and 5 to get 15. I add down to get 7. I multiply 3 and 7 to get 21. I add down to get 0, which is important because that should have happened. And then what this is telling me is that uh, 5x squared minus 8x minus 21, which is my original, actually factors into uh, x minus 3, which is why I put 3 up there in the box, and then times 5x plus 7. Okay, so I have another video about synthetic division if you don't remember how to do that. Um, but let's take a look at how we can use both of these ideas uh, to do a slightly more challenging problem. So the problem that we want to really deal with is the limit as x approaches 1 of x cubed plus x squared minus 5x plus 3 all over x cubed minus 3x plus 2. All right, so it's a limit. The first thing you want to try to do is direct substitution. So if I direct substitute into the numerator, so find the limit as x approaches 1 of the numerator, I actually end up getting 0. And if I try to direct substitute into the denominator or find this limit, I get 0 again. So what's good about that is that they're both polynomials, so I know that um, since I got zero in both cases, I know that x minus one is actually a zero of both of them, uh, or rather a factor. So x minus one is a factor of both the numerator and denominator, so I can work with that. Um, but then I'd have to factor cubics, and I do not like doing that. So I'm gonna use synthetic division on this. So first I'm gonna put uh, zero over zero there, 
and one goes in the box, I need the coefficients of the numerator. So it's gonna be one, and then one for x squared, a negative five for x, and then a three for the constant term. Put the line, drop down the one, uh, multiply it to get, one. so it's one times one is one, add down to get two. One times two is two, add down to get negative three. One times negative three is negative three, add down to get zero, which I need to get, otherwise it's not working um, for this particular thing, because I'm trying to factor. So I know that I can rewrite the numerator which was originally this, as, so we have that x minus one that we knew was a factor because one is a zero. And then what we found here is x squared plus two x minus three. So we factored the numerator, which is great. And let's do the same thing for the denominator. So we put the one in the box. Um, we have a one from x cubed. We have a zero from x squared, so that's a little trickier. We have a negative three from x and we have a two from the constant. Put the line, drop down that one. One times one is one. Add down, we get one. One times one is one. Add down, we get negative two. One times negative two is negative two. Add down, we get zero, which is what we're looking for. So we know we can rewrite the denominator, which was originally x cubed minus three x plus two, as we knew that x minus one was a factor and we just found that the other factor is x squared plus x minus two. All right, so uh, this is our original limit up here in the left corner, and what we wanna do now is rewrite this uh, using these factored forms. So here's our limit, and we can rewrite it as the limit is x plus one of the numerator factored into um, x minus one, and then this quantity and the denominator factored into x minus one, and then this quantity. And so now we can algebraically cancel. So our limit actually becomes uh, this limit. And if we try to direct substitute into this, we actually get um, zero over zero again, which means uh, we gotta do more work. Okay, so, but they're both polynomials, so we can do almost exactly the same thing except these are easy enough. Uh, instead of doing synthetic division, uh, I'm gonna factor, but I'm gonna factor again in that uh, way that I did kind of on the first page, where I know that x minus one has to be a factor because when I substitute one in, I get zero. So x minus one, uh, I know that this must start with x and then be plus three because um, I need to get negative three when I multiply in the end there. And then in the denominator, I'm gonna start again with x minus one. And then here, uh, it's gonna to have to be x and then plus two so that I can get minus two when I multiply them. So I have that and I can cancel and then my limit becomes this limit. So it's limit is x plus one of x plus three over x plus two. And if I direct substitute now, I get four over three, which is not zero over zero, it's not indeterminate. Um, so overall, I know that this limit that we originally had is equal to four thirds. Uh, okay, so that's the basic idea. It's that uh, we can factor, we can use synthetic division, we can look at the general form and have that help us to factor. And I hope you found this helpful and good luck.